Hello, Harry Magpie here again. Uh, you join me here at uh, a critical time in this investigation. Uh, I've managed to secure some satellite time. Uh, we're going to have a word with someone who was uh, right in the middle, right in the heart of where this Gillen boy operated. He's had to vacate the country. He's now going to be joining us in a minute or two live from Israel, where he's now set up home. Um, his only crime... Well, other than supplying drugs to innocent children, which we obviously can all forget about, he obviously frequented with too many undesirables, one of them being Gillen, and Gillen being the man who drove him from his country of his birth. We're going to go over live now, uh, by satellite. I apologise if the picture quality isn't quite what it should be, remember. He's joining us from probably thousands of miles away. We'll try and get a hold of him if I can. Um, I'm going to do my best to, to get a word with him and maybe try and expose Gillen. For the, the real swing that he is. Let's go over live now to uh, Tel Aviv and uh, Israel. Okay, just Tony the Dadley Fall, thanks for joining us. Um, I know that you've got a busy life just now, but one or two questions regarding um, the man that we've done this investigation on. You had a promise to do the walk here, you lived in Scotland, you're now joining us live from Israel, so you're living on a kibbutz. What happened? Why did you leave the country, Tony? Well, I was getting a bit of pressure up there. Well, I wouldn't like to see his name, but I was getting a bit of pressure off a certain man in, uh, in Hampton, and he was he uh, You don't like to mess about with these people, man. You obviously put the screws on you, Tom. Hey, Tony, you know you're uh, in the town in Hampton. Well, the family and that was getting frightened, and I think the only safe thing for me to do is. Uh, is to leave, you know. What are you scared, Tony? Terrified. I mean, it gets your reputation. My God, I've, I've been even waiting to see some of the things he's done. Tony, how involved were you in this organisation of his? Quite frankly, I'm too involved. This, yeah. is a, this is the reason why I've left. This is the reason why I've left the country. Uh, I know too much. I can cause him too much harm. Tony, you don't like to mention his name. What did you refer to him by? Well, it was Mr. Pink. Um, everybody called him Mr. Pink. Was there any reason for that? <laughs> well, we all know the film things and uh, it wasn't far for that anyway. So what you're trying to say is, this Mr. Pink ruled by fear? Of course, I mean, I've, I've heard the people going in the car and not coming back. Going to sit certain places. Wherever. And Tony, if you take you back home, back to Scotland, back to your roots, if you should be creating a Hamilton FP social club in Kansas Street, we have evidence backing up the fact that this was just a front for his illegal drug activities. Can you go into detail about that in any way? Oh, I'm just pretty sure. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, he was dying a bit of a shaman deal when I first met him. And uh, he was driving about an £85,000 Mercedes. So that tells a story, doesn't it? So you drove a shitty man there on you, used to know? <laughs> a shitty it was. <coughs> it was a pure heat. I see everybody used to laugh at him. I said, don't fucking laugh at him there. Tony McFall, you seem to be a man who's living under the shadow of death. Would that be fair to say? <laughs> well, but that's me. I'll not be returning to Scotland until his time's up, until he's dead. Because I'm happy if I turn back here, I'm going to get it. Thanks, Tony. Cheers.